don't think I need to use this mic in. Um, but it looks good, right? Um, so, so sorry about the delay. Uh, first of all, I just quickly wanted to uh, introduce the society that's actually putting this event together, and that's South Asia Society at MIU. Um, we're a collective group of South Asians who try to promote South Asia at NYU. Um, and we do events like calling Bollywood celebrities or calling politicians. Um, some of you might be on the list server already, but if you're not, please um, ask Monica or I to you know, put you on the list. Um, so I'm just going to skip all that because I know you guys have been waiting for a long time. Thank you so much for coming out, A, in the summer, or in, during the summer, and B, the summer rain, I guess. Uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Manish Malhotra. <laughs> So I'm really bad at introducing. <laughs> Can I able to hear you? Uh, right here. So you want to film? Yeah, yeah. So the film will be shown. Uh, I don't think this is the individual. It all started with the movies. Even today, it's what inspires me to dream and keep believing in that dream. Just watching the way Talk would turn into a costume and tell a story grabbed my imagination. So I sketched and never stopped. People always ask me how I made it from a costume designer to an international label. The truth is I didn't. We did. A team of creative minds finding inspiration in just about anything, adding, subtracting, deliberating on the minutest detail, choosing that perfect fabric, meticulously crafting every cut, embellishing it, bringing it to life in all its exuberance. But it's still far from done. There's fittings and finishing touches. Meanwhile, there are others coordinating with people halfway across the world, spreading outlets. After all, we want the whole world to see what we create. You don't always know what you're looking for, but when you see it, something just clicks. And as you watch it flash it on the ramp, elegant, Graceful, in all its glory, we realize together we made another dream come alive yet again. Can we get the lights? Thank you. Last minute private session that I've uh, unfortunately. Um, uh, I think last month, right? Or last last month we were to meet and I couldn't make it, and so when I came, when I decided to come for IFA, I was like, I have to go to NYU. Uh, IFA keeps happening every year. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much. And um, so I think I'm going to make more of a question and answer, uh, you know, space rather than speak so much about myself. Um, it, it's uh, I find it very amazing when I have to speak at institutes because I haven't studied at all. Uh, my entire childhood was in the film theatre, watching movies. I was a very bad student, <laughs> and uh, I was only interested in movies. And uh, so, I think Thursday used to be an off, and Saturday used to be a half day. So I was at theatres. I live in Mumbai, in Bandra, and there are these three theatres: Gaiety, Galaxy, Germany. So I, my, for me, my childhood is a film theatre, and I have to give it to my mother who encouraged it, and she never ever stopped me from going and watching movies. And um, there I was, film after film, watching actresses, watching clothes, uh, watching actors, music, songs. I was only interested in that. So at the, at, by sixth standard, I think I got interested in art, and I, I uh, you know, enrolled myself in a drawing class. And uh, my drawing got really good, and that's how I passed my science exams. <laughs> and every year, I just scraped through. I managed to just scrape through. I think last minute, I. I actually got religious because of that, because I should start praying, and it was always <laughs> last minute money and, and all of that. So, and then I would go to a temple and a church to thank God that I passed my exam. So I was that bad a student. <laughs> and, um, but uh, my drawings got better. I got very, very interested in color. And in uh, sketching uh, clothes and music, I was always very interested in. And uh, then came college. And uh, we live in Bandra. And which is like the suburb of uh, Mumbai, and now a very good suburb. And um, in town side, there were these fancy colleges which I wanted to join. And um, no interest in education. And uh, so I said, I'll do arts, and I want to model. And so I joined the college. And uh, then I kind of opened up to watching English films. You make new sets of friends and things, and your life changes. And um, I started modeling. 
and my entire college life is modeling. So I would be going for a screen test, and I would be going for, uh, I, I got lots of ads to do. And um, I was 19, and I told my father that I haven't really traveled. I haven't been abroad, and I'm I going to uh, take on the world. I haven't even seen anything besides Mumbai and Delhi or wherever our Punjabi relatives are. And uh, <laughs> so that, um, you're making money out of modeling. Save and go. And there I was, then I started shooting for catalogs and uh, all kinds of ads, and, and I switched for my first uh, trip abroad, which was Singapore. And I still very clearly remember getting into a taxi in Singapore and saying, wow, it's air conditioned. <laughs> and, uh, and that was all with my own money. And uh, so at the age of 19, to go on a trip to see the world, a little bit Singapore, Bangkok in those days, and uh, it was from my own money. And then I joined a boutique. So I, as a student, actually, I, as a, I mean, as a teenager, were always very work phobic. I was not work phobic, work oriented. I was always wanting to do something with my life. So where it was modeling and then I joined a boutique for extra pocket money and I was so interested in clothes that I used to sketch a lot and drape the mannequin. Now, I'm also speaking about a time which was 1988 um, um, and there wasn't any course for boys in Bombay. So there was nothing. There was only SNDT, which was an all women's college and Lyft had just opened, I think, about 87 or 88 in Delhi. And, um, and the first uh, store had just opened in 87, if I'm not mistaken, with designers called Ensemble. And I was like, I don't have the money to come out with collection. I have no experience. I haven't traveled. Um, so let me join a boutique and see whether I'm really interested. Or I'll become a film director. And of course, what Punjabi mothers think that their son is the best looking. <laughs> so my mother was after me a hero winter. And I was like, that I don't think it will happen. And um, let me, uh, you know, let me try designing. And they were like, designing? You're going to be a ladies tailor? And my mother was like, what will I tell my people at Cart's table that, I mean, what's my son doing is making blouses? So, um, but I have to give this to my parents. I mean, even if they didn't agree with me, they went with whatever I wanted to do. <clears throat> so they, were never, they never objected. They were never an obstacle. It was never like, oh my god, I have to convince my parents. I never had to convince my parents. I would just tell them I'm doing this. And that comfort, I still have with them. I live with my parents at the age of 15. And, um, and I have that comfort with them, and they are very, very forthcoming with whatever I do. She still doesn't understand it, because the other day she just asked me, kuch kapri I said, what, what? Treating me like as if I go with a bag of sweets. <laughs> <laughs> I say, hey, please, you know, sister, please buy two sarees. I mean, so she yet thinks about it in that manner, though. Um, she acknowledges everything that's happened. So here I was in a, in a boutique, working and uh, modeling, and making my sketches better, attending to clients, draping the mannequin, um, and, and stuff like that. And then I said that I want to assist Yash Chopra, but I didn't know him. And David Dhawan is married to my cousin's sister, and he very graciously said, why don't you do an outfit for Julie Chanda? This is in 89. And I was, I was excited, that's great, because I could do movies. And, and, and the late 80s saw very, um, so I think Hindi films have been extremely, extremely stylish. If you see the 40s, or you see the 50s, you see the 60s, they were, um, especially the 50s, because that's when you had a lot of British influence yet, uh, and then you see this, all Raj Kapoor's films where the sets are art decor, the costumes are beautiful, all the men are in their dinner jackets, and everything is super stylish. 60s saw the whole of Kashmir, um, very pretty actresses, perfect pastel shade saris, um, and men in sweaters and uh, you know a lot of uh, romance. Seventies was a lot of the uh, big collar dots, you know the power, the flower power culture and everything. But I think it's the late eighties that went haywire with uh, you know the movies. And so I thought to myself, um, why are there designers establishing themselves with all song? No one looks at films. No one is interested in films. What if I get into movies and design because I love films? And I like design. What if I merged the two together, i will able to make a name? And here I was, all of 21, 22, wanting to get into movies. Uh, this one song I did for Jimmy Chawla in 1989, and then 1990, a photographer called Rakesh Rasa took me to meet Sri Devi and said, he's this boy, he really sketches well, and he works in the boutique, why don't we start working with him for a styling and a photo shoot? Now the term styling wasn't there in India at that time. And, uh, here I started my photo, uh, photo shoots and I got I started getting a lot of work in films. So I was 
Shri Devi, uh, Sunny Deol, a lot of actors absolutely intimidated because I was, what, all of 22, 23, and here I was designing for films uh, with stars, and at that time I thought the stars were a little more like, oh, they're top stars. So the, the, you know, the assistants would be scared to go into their room, and there were only female assistants, uh, designers for all the actresses. So, and one day I asked a producer, what's the script of the film, and he looked at me and said, how dare you ask me the film? Uh, I, I was like, uh, but how do I make clothes? And so they were not really used to a designer. There was, of course, Bhagavad Taya, who was the fabulous designer, but she had then, by then, moved on to doing more period films. And um, so the commercial glamour zone, here I was, uh, trying to change things around, and it was tough. The first three years were bad. Because in those days, they were, the producers were independent. So, I mean, if the film is flopped, the office is shut. And your checks used to bounce, and there was no way, no place to go. And I said, I have nothing to else to fall back on because I didn't want to join my father's business. And uh, I said, I have to give it my all. So it was 18 hours of work. I would look out for clothes, Western clothes. And, and I said, how do I make a difference? It's three years. I have no money. I'm running Hilda Skelter. Actors are, and the producers, the directors are too much. What do I do? And, and I said, wait a second. I have to add something to my work, some value to myself. Why should actors make clothes to me? And I said, why don't I introduce styling? So I didn't know the term styling, but I, I started. So I asked Sri Devi for a film called Gumra, which Yash Johar, Karanjo's father, was um, producing. And he called me up and he said, uh, uh, I used to have a small workshop in a garage. And he said, can I speak with Manish? And so the, the Adani building had a phone. So I went there. And they said, Sri Devi is giving me your number. And I'm sending you 10,000 rupees as an advance. And I was like, Someone's actually offering me advance, uh, so thank you. And, <laughs> and so I met Sri Devi and I said, thank you. After six months, I heard from you, so I thought you were not happy with my work. And she said, no, no, no. I was ready for a new film to come on board. So I said to her, I said, why don't we work out a look? Why is it that heroines have short hair or really modern hair with a Western outfit? And suddenly the next scene, they're in an outfit and they have a long jewelry. <laughs> How does that happen? Hair? How can hair change? <laughs> so let's say I'm wearing one kind of hair, one kind of makeup. So I think it was the first time a designer was getting into hair and makeup. It was, and I had makeup artists giving me dirty looks, like, why is he interfering in our work? But I was trying to set the whole look, so what's the shoe, what's the bag? And I think, um, and I met a lot more younger, like Ram Gopal Varma, Dharmesh Dashran, Aditya Chopra, Akaran Johor, and films changed, my work really got out there. And here I was from having not traveled uh, five years back, till five years ago, and then I was on a flight every week from Switzerland to uh, London. And I remember those, in those days, I don't think, I don't even know when they were born, but in the early 90s, um, all uh, chiffon, so the, the actress was in a chiffon, sorry, while the hero was in a muffler and a trench coat. <laughs> and then we would be, I would be altering the clothes in the Alps. You know, there was no assistant, it was unheard of. The fact that I started that trend of being taken abroad uh, as a designer was only new. So a designer coming only has to get a lot of dirty looks from producers, like he's an added expense. And, um, but the films ran, ran, the clothes got very popular, and then it became a must. So I, was, I would come back, work for one full day, and by then I'd hire two assistants. My bedroom was my office, and I would be running back to a shooting. So that's why I came into New York, that's why I came into London. Um, started seeing stores here. I think travel has been a huge, um, huge teacher for me. And uh, I remember starting out at the DK and offer, DK and buy a store in London and Bond Street and calling Aditya Chopra and saying, can I buy two outfits for Karishma for this film, Dil um, to And it's a very sporty look and you know, if she wears these two outfits, it'll become a look. And he said, okay. And I bought them and, I, and then of course, all the sports wear came into fashion and all of that. So. In those days, if anybody asked me for a, uh, for a wedding outfit, and I would be like, no, I don't have, I, I only really make costumes for movies. And um, here I was very popular films, uh, uh, to the NRI kids who were that time confused between very traditional uh, conservative parents at home and, um, and, and you know, a modern environment. And to use like cool Indian clothes. And um, Yash Birla and Avanti Birla, very popular, a very big um, industrialist asked me to, uh, to a store, and I was like, uh, to you know, start a store with them, and I was like, I mean, I never thought of retail and or label, but you know, because it's your, I'll start a store. But my look, my my mind and heart was into films, 
I went to the first fashion show, and that's when I started the trend of a showstopper, which was purely done on emotion, because I asked Urmila to be my showstopper, because I'd have this super successful Ramila with her. And because I was from movies, I had this front row full of actors, and um, which became a norm later. And as we stand, so it's my 27th year in films. Tonight I'm going to get the 50th award of my career. And this is for Edila Mushkil. And it's 12 years to my label. And, um, and today I have a Life changes. Somebody asked me that, somebody one day asked me, did you become the Manish Rota that you wanted to? I said, oh my god, that be I became many years ago. But your dreams change, your ambitions change, your wants change, and people around you change. And uh, for me today, it's all about my label. I want to start a diffusion line. I want to open stores worldwide. I want to start a lot of avenues um, with my label. And maybe 10 years ago, I wouldn't have that um, you know, mindset. Or maybe even five years ago. But today, I do. So films are there. I think films are my first love. I'll never leave that. They'll never leave me, hopefully. And, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, but today, um, I mean, if I had a choice between a collection and a movie, I would choose a collection. And um, because, um, and also there's a lot of awareness. Um, in the last two years, or three years, social media has taken, I mean, even today we're speaking here in New York City and NYU, it's a very private gathering, and the world can see us. So the world's getting really closer. So in the, in the earlier days, there was a lot of hard work that one did. But if the film didn't run, no one saw it. But today, even if the film doesn't run, I think today people make an offering, they put it on Instagram first. So it's a bit short-lived, but um, and it's a very instant. But I think that we've I've gone through a test of time of sustaining and um, being here. So more ambition, more uh, uh, dreams, more things to do, and that's what my life today at 50 is. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much. So we wanted we wanted this to be more of an intimate setting in a conversation. So we're going to open this up, um, and thankfully, Mr. Mohan. No gossip questions. <laughs> <laughs> Respectful. Uh, we are live streaming, so I will keep it to one question each, and then we'll spread it around. So who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Hi, thank you for being Hello. here. I don't think this is working. Okay, we'll is see. that working? No. I mean, it's fine. Okay. 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 Um, so, do you ever feel like you have writer's block when it comes to figuring out new designs for yourself? And if so, like, where do you get your inspiration from, or like, how do you go about overcoming the writer's block? Overcoming the writer's writer's block, but more like writer's for a designer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that blocks every day <laughs> in everything. I mean, whether it's design, whether it's people, whether it's assistants, whether it's uh, uh, clients, and uh, I think uh, you know. So, but I. But it's just that I, I think I am one person who's just sacrificed everything for my profession. You know, even if today I have to, I've sacrificed friendships, I've sacrificed relationships, everything. So even if today I have a, a friend's birthday, but if I have a very important work meeting, I know this sounds awful, but it's the <laughs> truth and I only know how to be honest, I would do my, I would go for my work. And I, and I think friends who've understood that and been with me, um, have stayed along with me, you know what I mean? So to me, I think that there are blocks, but I kind of, you know, like, uh, uh, talk to my mind, talk to my heart, um, gives me, takes me another two or three days. Sometimes I'm, when assistants are asking me questions, I feel blocked, especially by evenings, because I'm an early riser. I said, I'll come back to it the next morning. And you kind of uh, tune in. For example, I have a couture show at the end of this uh, month, and um, at times for the set design, for the collection, I do feel blocked. And then I kind of make an effort to look at more, maybe art, architecture, walk around, listen to music, um, because it's something that I'm committed to. And I think when I'm committed to it, you just, um, you know, kind of speak to your mind and go back to it and keep going away from it. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Shane. Hi. Um, I'm from Bangalore. Um, Shane. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, I go to uh, Parsons. Okay. So um, I I know like the design process and stuff. And like today, I think most of the millennials will agree that we use social media a lot to get inspired and get ideas, especially like now with Pinterest and Instagram. 
do you use those types of like, social media apps like to constantly like I guess pin stuff? Well, I think that I think that it's it's a, it's a, social media is a reality yeah. of our life. We all love it, um, and um, so definitely, I mean, you get to see what's happened in Tokyo, what's happened in New York, what uh, international designers doing, um, you know, uh, fashion shows and, and all of that. However, sometimes I do feel that there's too much information, yeah. you know, and that can also confuse you. So I made it a point actually this year, my first resolution was I'm going to wake up and not look at my phone. <laughs> and give it at least 45 minutes to one hour before I go and see. Although it's like you're, you know, you're just waking up and you get your phone and you start looking at your phone from your bed. And so I think that it's, it's a plus, but like everything in life, there are pluses and minuses. So I think the, the pro is that it's, it's great that you have so much information which can be very inspiring. And the con is that you're getting inspired by something and the next thing you have another picture which is good. So, you know, so it can confuse you. So that balance is important. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Singita. Hi, Singita. Yeah. Singita, I love your work. It's, well, thank it's you. gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I have a question to ask you about your inspiration and your process. So is there, I know that um, I too agree with you. I don't want to talk on my phone either and the social media stuff. When you say you get inspiration from like architecture and then uh, wandering and just looking at things, is there one signature pattern that you have that's your own, that you enjoy drawing and that you enjoy creating? Because I know you do a lot of like like um, beautiful, like similar shapes, but the patterning that goes on it, the embroidery that goes on it, is there one signature element that you really enjoy? So I actually like a lot of embroidery. Mm -hmm. I like a bit of shimmer. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I love glamour. Um, I love flowers, leaves, and I think it changes with women and men. I like men to be slightly more structured in their look, while as women to have much more flowy clothes. And um, so I think ultimately I'm drawn to the things that I like, mm -hmm. you know, and um, which is good because it keeps your signature alive, but at times not good because it can get repetitive. So that's when I kind of try to look at a lot of other things which probably wouldn't inspire me right away. Uh, so like, so I try to balance that. So um, architecture <coughs> is something that I've developed uh, in the course of my life to look at and be interested in. And uh, why is what I'm originally interested in is a lot more flow, a lot more prettiness, uh, which is, can get boring, you know. So one has to push yourself constantly to even look at things that don't come to you. So uh, you don't come to you first. So that's what I do. Hi, um, Hi, my name is Angela, and uh, I'm in process work. And what I wanted to ask you was um, mm -hmm. in terms of, like the, you, you work with a lot of embroidery, and That's you right. work with a lot of artisans, and how can like, generally like designers and companies here like work to empower artisans in India? And I know you worked with Michuan, and a lot of, like you collaborate with a lot of artisans, and what do you think about this whole decentralized structure? But I think it's, it's happening all over the world. I mean, you know, once reaching out and, and, and working with a lot of artisans in India, especially, we have so much of art and craft. And there are a lot of dying um, artisans in terms of their, their work. And, uh, and it, it's very good to revive their work. There's so much, even in hand loom, there's so much of uh, power looms that have come in and things like that. And I just feel that, like I said earlier, my journey is very different from any other designer in India as well, because I started as a costume designer. And in my labor is compared to me only 12 years old, but I, I see um, that in the next uh, two years, I want to uh, get a lot of Indian craft all over the world and get a lot more artisans to be busy and, and work. Mishra, for example, the NGO, uh, when we started it five years ago, there were only 40 women who were employed, but today there are about 350 women and they take their work to their home, and they, and it's not just about, um, uh, you know, it's, it's about they're, they're feeling good about what they're doing. So I think that um, it, it's, the, it's the way ahead, and each designer uh, from their country should try to definitely uh, get a lot more work out there. Yeah. Hey, um, Hi, I'm a student at FIT. Um, so one of the things that we've been talking a lot about as school is about ethical and sustainable fashion. Um, and how designers are moving more towards, you know, how do we leave a planet in a better place than it is today? And in the designs, they're bringing more recycled materials, sustainable, 
ways of getting to those fabrics and things. I'm just curious, do you see that shift happening in Indian? Um, oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. That's, the, that's another plus point that social media has and that awareness that you, you get. And I think the youngsters today mm -hmm. are extremely bright and educated and aware of what's happening in the world, and that's what you are catering to. And those are the people that are catering to. These are you youngsters are our future. And, and I think it's very, very important to move with time and, and look at sustainability and look at, I mean, for example, earlier, when my assistants could, or a lot, lot of paper that I used to use, I didn't really think that we we're wasting that much of paper, but today I do. And uh, all you think about plastic and, you know, and lots of other environmental um, issues, environmental things that happen to your life, you're a little more concerned with. And I definitely see there's a future uh, being a very integral part of my label as well, and a lot of other designers. Yeah. Hi, my Hi. name is Anol, and uh, I came from Delhi, and I'm happy to see so many Parsons people here because I graduated Parsons last year. And my question is, what is your comment on the moment that fashion is having in India right now? Because for a lot of us who say came here and got educated here, develop a sense of aesthetic and a sense of design, like a design sensibility here. And sometimes we question whether it translates to the customer in India at the moment. Well, I think that, I think it's, it's we're very close globally today and it's become one big world. So I actually would look at it as a positive because I would look at it that if you are being educated here and exposed to so much, uh, you know, here and you get that aspect in your clothes in India. It could be a lovely different voice. And I think people are really opening up to different um, uh, voices and different cuts and different uh, moods um, and, and different people who have something different to say from their work, whether it's clothes, whether it's any kind of fashion or style. And um, I think that everyone's opening up to that. So you would be in full support of that? Absolutely. In fact, I'd be very inspired by that. I'm inspired by that because we're all like, and especially my journey, I've been very used to what I'm doing, it's, it's led to a lot of popularity. But please trust me, I'm, I'm, I am starting a new label, you know, which is going to be a lot more younger. It's a diffusion, it's a bridge between prep and couture. And I'm looking at absolutely different things to express and say from that. So I think it's very important and it's a good thing. Thank you. Hi, Hi. thank you for being here. Um, my question is kind of off of what you just said. Um, do you sort of see now or in the near future, some sort of international designer collaboration, kind of like how Sadhya Sachi had with Louis Vuitton and um, Versace H&M, just to be more accessible to the Western world a little I bit? I think so, yeah. I think so, definitely. And I, I just hope and pray that international companies come into India and support Indian designers yeah. and take them on. Because see, at the end of the day, we are in designers first half of the day, and the other half of the day, you're forced to be businessmen. Right. If you have a label which is popular and your clothes have to go away, which is, at least for me, it's been a bit like tough to understand. It's taking me time. Right. And, um, but while as in internationally, there are lots of companies which come and back a designer. Yeah. And I think that's, that's um, that I hope happens soon for the Indian class. Well, thank you. Hi. Um, Hi. My name is Risha. Um, I'm from Delhi. And I'm just curious. Well, now I'm a part of. So um, what, when I came into movies in the 90s, uh, I think my work stood out because I was very influenced by the 60s and 70s. And so I kind of made a uh, uh, close to monochromatic. And when I came into the multi color and there was so much going on, and I kind of toned it down to one each, like colors, because I love colors. They inspire me. Uh, I think the 50s and 60s have been great. And as I kind of worked further, and uh, you get a little more mature, you understand, understand things much better. I don't know I sound much older now. And, I, and my, my, my parents would say these things, I would be like, oh, what are you saying? And you're saying that. You actually tend to understand much more. And maybe 10 years ago, I was not that fascinated with black and white movies, but today I am. I love, love the style that I see of those films. So I, I, and I hope to get that back. Even the actors and um, 
the kind of depth that they have, the kind of looks that they have. And it fascinates me how they did all of that uh, in those days. You know, from crop t-shirts to one shoulder swimsuits uh, to like a drop t-shirt. I mean, did the film in Vader 1952? I mean, they're, they're, so it's been very, um, uh, I think they were very influenced. Um, and it was like a, see, that's what I meant. Like, they were influenced by English films. There, there was the a lot of British influence in India. There were Anglo Indians who, who tailored fabulous clothes of their influence. And there were influences. But today, I think it's too much going on. There's so much, in, there's so much knowledge. There's so much inspiration around it. I think the, the inspiration is very confused as well. So I think that's the that's the danger of this quick uh, press a button, uh, you know, picture. Hi. Uh, hi, I'm Neha. Um, hi, Neha. I love your work. Oh, thank I got you. so into what you were saying, I almost forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> I was more curious about early on in your career because you were a pioneer, pioneer in what you were doing, and there weren't a lot of men doing this, and a lot of um, unique things that you were introducing into costume design and all that. What kind of obstacles did you face, and um, how difficult was it to gain support from other people who would pursue? this line of work and then inspire others to do that? Well, I think the whole uh, journey was very pure. I had, I mean, there was a plan that, okay, I will stand out if I do something different. And I always feel in any profession that you do, how do you stand out from the other person who's doing the same profession? Of course, with better work, but I think more than that, it's professionalism. So I was there, you know? I was there every time on time. If there was an alteration in the night uh, to be done, I would sit at the tailor the entire night and get it done. So I became that reliable person until date. Uh, just the other day, a new assistant of mine was giving fitting to Sri Devi, and she pointed it out to me. She said, whenever Sri Devi speaks about you, after all these years, her tone always is, it's Manish, it will be done. You know, it's that faith that I built in people. And uh, and that made me, then give me more and more work. I mean, reliable and uh, professional and hardworking. Everybody makes mistakes, everybody has good and bad days, every design is not great. But the fact that you can say, yes, it's wrong, it's not working out, I'm going to change it. And that's something that I still do even in my stores. It's my instruction to my entire team don't make it sound, oh, you bought this dress, now I'm not taking it back. It's a safe. No. If there is an issue, deal with it. If there is something that they're saying, deal with it. And it's not that, take it back if you have to. It's fine, you know. We will work harder and peace. I think that's, that's also very important. I still do that. And it's in my nature. And, uh, and I think that really kind of worked for me. And um, I didn't have, I mean, I had this thing that I want to work with all top actresses, top directors, all of that, but I didn't have this vision of a label. And that came along. I think because I so sincerely worked towards one thing. That, so I, I've never seen a non-busy day. I've, I've always been busy. I've always taken on a lot more. I've not said, oh, I'm, it's a weekend, I'm not going to work, or it's like, it's night, I'm not coming. It's nothing like that. I've always been, oh, it's a work meeting, I'm going there first. So I think that also works for you, and it is working for me. I think so. so. I'm gonna stray away from the fashion world and ask you a question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it just sum right up a little bit. Uh, but I perceive you as a public figure now, um, rather than just a fashion designer. Of course, you are that, but um, you're much more than that, especially due to social media and things of that nature. Um, right now in India, it's like the climate, whether it's social, political, religious, it's very polarized. And I wanted to ask you, a, should public figures like you be standing up for things that you believe in and you think the right thing should be? And B, if you do that, have you ever, has your personal work been harmed and has that um, kind of gotten in the way of like, not just you personally, but you've seen that others stray away from making mistakes on things that are going wrong or right, etc. So I think that we all come with certain nature. And I think my nature has been this focused nature. Even when I'm walking, I never look left and right, but sitting in a car. And you know, it's just been my work. So I kind of refrain from commenting too much on social issues or anything else, because honestly, I don't have that time. Uh, of course, when I have to stand up to something, I do, but in my own little way. 
and I think I'm very, very busy employing people, um, saving the artisans and their beautiful work, and trying to get it to, uh, you know, I'm just concentrating on what I do best, and uh, it's limited, but it's focused. So I think that's what it is. So I don't really, so I've never really had a backlash because I've never really got into it, like said. But the thing is that for being a celebrity, if you say so, I think what happens is that um, it's nice because you can say a lot of things that you can or that I spoke about um, gender violence uh, and show that I did a fashion week um, and uh, uh, that was, uh, that was uh, supported by the World Bank um, and like my fashion week in Mumbai. So there are lots of kind of topics that you take and you incorporate that into your work. That's what I try to do. In my own way, that's my point. Because sometimes I feel like very strong comments are just aggravating a conversation, and and then it just leads to no solution but just conversation. Yeah. yeah. Hi. I'm, Hi. I'm from Bombay as well. So I had a question for you. So you said that when you started off, there was nothing like stylists or like that no. kind of thing that exists. That's right. And I think it's fair to say that now there are a lot of different kind of entryways into the industry that at one point didn't exist. So you see, oh, let's say relatively. But in today's day, when so many people have the same dream in a lot of ways, and so many people want to accomplish something in that industry, what advice would you have for someone like us of our age starting off now? How, what would you say is the best way for us to end up the world like that? No, I think that, like I mentioned, how do you stand up? How are you different from the other? Why should I come to you and not go to that person? Of course, you think you're the best, but you think you're the best. How do I convince, how do you convince the other person that you are the best or you're better? You know, or you're better for some kind of a, a clothing. So I think A, um, very importantly, is what kind of work do you like? Do you like Indian? Do you like Western? Do you like, so give that a kind of a focus. And then also, like I said, give yourself um, a USP. I mean, uh, the, you know, you hire, hire you as a stylist for X amount of clothes, but you do a lot more. You know, you add a lot more. So for me, I think also what worked for me in movies was that I was very interested in storytelling. Because I also want to be a film director. So I'm very interested in movie scripts. There were a lot of times when I would tell the actors, but how can you change here? A lot of girls were looking at their changes. How many costume changes do I have? What is the makeup? What is the hair? And I'd be like, but you can't do that because this scene is continuing there. Or in your role, this is not there. How can you be saying that? And she would be like, oh, okay, you're right. Good point. You know? So I was thinking beyond. I was not just thinking about my work selfishly. I was also thinking about the script. So I think that is important. That's the only way to stand out in a world which is too much. There are too many people. Mm -hmm. So you have to give that extra, uh, you know, thing. Uh, as I say, you're like mojo to yourself. <laughs> Hi, um, Hi. I'm Sunday. I'm but so I have to say that the three boys that are in this room, I mean four boys, one said, but the three boys are not asked a single question. <laughs> <laughs> so the next <laughs> question, the four boys. <laughs> yeah. So all the boys have to ask a question. <laughs> there can't be a female one. That <laughs> so inspired and aspired by. Yeah. I think that's what something that I definitely in the next two years want to do, for sure. Please do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, Manish. Hi. Uh, so I'm a cancer researcher, and my wife, uh, Ashwini, she is in FID, student. And so we got married really early. <laughs> yeah, she got married really early. Yes, yes. So we are from Bombay too, and uh, we have been here for a while now. Uh, so when I came here, I was like, okay, what is your personality? But for me, this was a very inspiring story. So although I'm from a different field, this is very inspiring to me. How you uh, become pioneer, and uh, now congratulations on the award. Thank you. And I wish you a very successful career. Uh, so I have a two-part question. One, I see you are juggling so many things. Uh, you're in the limelight all the time. So how do you deal with stress? That's one. And the second <laughs> question is, uh, like, uh, do you see if someone is so passionate, so focused, so professional, 
how can they balance family life and career? So, A, I don't have a family life, and this is I'm not married or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a relationship. Yeah. I live with my parents, so that's why my family life okay. is quite, quite um, set. And my brother and sister in law work with me, okay. so that's where I keep being my family, that's one thing. And um, second, I think that we all learn to deal with that stress, don't we? I mean, some get boggled down with it, yeah. some get um, too taken by it, and some things like a day to day thing, and you kind of, you know, you know do it. And what do you do? You do? So I deal with it. I love to deal with things. I never keep them unattended. Even if with a friend, with a client, if I have an issue, I feel someone's being rude or someone's being wrong, I will pick up the phone and do it myself. I don't fear confrontation. And, um, and I'm not silly to go and just have a confrontation. Also. So it's that balance. You know? But I think, like I don't fear failure. I don't fear failure, I don't fear stress. Uh, it's all a part of the, uh, you know, what you do. And uh, that's all you do. But if you're asking me whether I meditate or whether, no, I don't listen to music, I love good food. Um, I go to these phases with workouts. These days I'm in a workout phase, one and a half year I wasn't. So it's not those things. Thank you so much. Hi, Manish. My Hi. name is Madhika. Thank you so much for coming to speak with us. Uh, I'm not in the fashion, like really a fashion student or whatever, but I read an article yesterday about gender fluid clothing and it's a very prominent topic over here. And I was just thinking, what is your opinion about gender fluid fashion in the Indian industry? Well, it's coming in there for sure. I mean, the last fashion week that there was in Bombay, there's a lot of gender, gender fluidity uh, clothes that one saw. And I think it's good, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a nice step ahead. It's, it's a younger step ahead, and it's another voice again. Yeah. Whether it lasts out, doesn't last out, we'll see. But at least for now, it's very interesting. I find it, I find it very interesting. It's fearless, which is nice. Thank you. Um, everyone fine? Um, Hi, so you have, your guys have a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you, as a creative person, and, and being in a creative field, can you talk about how, as the head of your label, you're able to balance the idea of creativity with commerce and being able to like, make the business work as well as put out there the, the work that you find to be the most inspiring? I think that with me, um, and like maybe it's again a part of my nature, I don't know, but even in movies, a lot of my work connected to the world. So I kind of have a sense of what people will like. And it also comes from the dilemma full of myself. I think a lot of artists, uh, whether they're painters, designers, actors, who think that, oh, I am so talented. <laughs> and if the world doesn't understand it, or if it doesn't do well, the world didn't get me. I, I don't come from that philosophy. I always feel that if the world didn't come get it, that means there's something wrong with it. I need for the world to get it, you know? And everybody's not looking at a, at a lecture from your, of your artistry. They see what they see, they like what they like. So that's what I understood from movies also. That's, my, that's why my work as a costume designer got really popular because I connected with the audience. And I think I still have that great way. So that's why even in my work, it, it's, I, 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 I don't look at myself like I'm self-taught. I, every day is like I have to do something new. It's not like, oh, you know, this is it. Even with the bride when I'm meeting or the bride room, they would say some things and I'm trying to talk to them, but I won't be like, you can't speak, it's me, you know? So I think that adaptability and that, that whole, you know, that, that openness has helped me understand commerce as well. And that's what I bring to my work. And for me, commerce is as important, though it's second to creativity, but it's important. And not because of the money factor, but for the fact that I'll reach out to a lot more people. Otherwise, it's, uh, you know, it's just me and some people facing myself. So commerce has, has been a part of what I do very honestly, and I, I have something that I embrace. So this room holder does have a busy schedule, so we're gonna wrap up last few questions if you have them. Since you're so inspired by film, do you have a particular film that you like to watch over and over again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe. Mm -hmm. But these days there's a lot more Mughlayas in which I love. I actually, mm -hmm. in fact, costume design for the play, I did 550 outfits for the play, and I kind of died in that. Because in a play, what happens is they have an understudy. 
and the costumes of the understudy have to be ready also when the play is going on and the 500 I mean there were some 500 uh, no how many uh, dancers about 50 dancers and dance sequences and it was, it was something but I kind of um, uh, I love that film I love it for its richness and and it's um, you don't really get to see that anymore right so mm -hmm. I love all, all those kind of movies so very grand and, and you know and costumes and and uh, they've got that big kind of uh, shots and set design. So I kind of really like that. So I like all those movies. So now we have the other one. Mughaliyas. 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 you have a Western one? No, strangely, Western one actually, okay. I like Strictly Ballroom. Okay. Which is yeah. Vastam is, I think, first film. Mm -hmm. I, c I don't know why the film always ended up, uh, maybe because I wanted to make a musical film. But I like, also, I like musical films. Yeah. Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. My sister's in your head. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Manish. My name is Sanders. Hi. And it's really nice to meet you. And thank you for taking the time to come speak to us. Uh, I was just wondering, um, how do you see the future of high street uh, fashion in India? And do you see yourself involved in that? Yeah, absolutely. Like I mentioned earlier, that I'm starting a new neighborhood. And that is high street. And, uh, and, uh, and I, I think that is the future. That is the future. To answer that question, I love Devil Best Brother. I've seen him so many of them. What can that boss? <laughs> In fact, Nathan's my assistant, and once we did that whole thing, I came the bag and I threw the bag at him. I love that film. I really love that film. Isn't that a lovely insight to our, yeah. our sort of our world? So I can't believe that. Hi, Manish. It's Hi. Um, Thank you. So a lot of Western designers, like famous designers, are very inspired by South Asian fashion and South Asian ethnic, ethical motives. A lot of Indian designers also inspired by Western yeah. gowns and gowns and everything. So, but you have been talking a lot about expanding into the West and other places. So when you think of expanding, do you want to um, do something like that where you're mixing Western and ethical things together to create a fusion, or do you want to expand with ethnic? Well, fusion is a, is a word that I would call as global conversation or global. So I definitely would not want the clothes to be seen, oh, it's so Indian, I went to my Indian party. <laughs> no, I definitely want them to be Western silhouettes, Western fit, feel, but the craft could be Indian, the color, the embroidery, uh, and things like that, you know. But I definitely don't want to be, my label when it comes internationally to be seen as I'll wear it for the Diwali party. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. So definitely, I want that like the world to be global, and uh, you know, so influences are Indian. But the first, you know, the concept is Indian, but the cut and the innovation or the mood or the feel is is, is more global. I'm quite Okay, last question. Hi, I'm Hi. Yushi. I'm a big fan of your work. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm Well, I, I'm impatient, I always want more. I always want to do a lot more. I love busy days, I hate Sundays. <laughs> and um, and um, I love work, I love work. I mean, this is ideal for me. I'm meeting all young uh, students, thinking about it, it's a, a world. And if I could aspire with one of you all this evening, this, this afternoon, I would feel nice about it. So I kind of like what I do. I should know, I love what I do. <laughs> And um, to me, that's what keeps me going. Okay, thank you so much for coming here. Can we get a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a few minutes, and he's agreed to take a few pictures. Yeah, uh, so if we could quickly do that, because Mr. Mulder is on a busy schedule, he's got an interview lined up as well. So if you want uh, pictures, just do it in groups, please. Thank you so much. And right here, and in the line.